Hello everybody, today I'm here with Nick Hope and we're going to be talking about raising finance off your existing assets. So Nick, do you want to give us an overview on how you would go about raising finance? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I get asked by lots of my clients who are either just starting out or they're looking to expand their portfolio, Yeah. Um, how they can raise some additional capital. Um, we look at that in a couple of different ways. So the first one is always if you've got money tied up in your main residence, yeah. then we can help you release that uh, by raising a standard residential mortgage. Yeah. Um, the way that you would look to do that is well, we just shop around the market, find you some, find you the best deal. The thing with residential mortgages is that they're really driven by your income. Okay. So the amount you can borrow is driven solely by that and your ability to repay it. There are a few options out there whereby you can still take an interest-only version of it, but you really need to go into a bit more detail of that with your broker. Okay. Uh, and interest rate-wise, um, you can still borrow. So there's some of the two-year fixed rates at the moment, um, they all start with one. So Ooh, even... Very so tasty. Yeah, 1.34 I think is the lowest... Uh, if you go up the loan to values, so as you're borrowing a little bit more against the value of your property, yeah. then that rate will increase, but it's still 1%, so it's still below 2%. Um, even at 85, 90%, we can still get some fantastic deals, and it's really, really cheap money. So you can release you more out of your existing portfolio than you would on a new buy-to-let mortgage from the sounds of that. Yeah, 85%. because it's yeah because it's on because you're talking about borrowing money against your main residence. Yeah, they'll go up to ninety percent generally for a right. remortgage on that. So you could release a, the lion's share of the the money that's tied up in your house to then go and invest. Um, the one thing that you really need to check is I would always advise that you um, take a mortgage that doesn't insist upon simultaneous completion. Okay. Uh, because simultaneous completion means that, well, here's your money, but you've got to use it straight away to buy that so particular good. buy to that property. Whereas if you choose a product that doesn't insist upon that, then the money goes into your bank account and then that enables you to then to go and shop and okay. find your next investment. Um, what so we, you're trying to tie up two deals simultaneously, your remortgage and a buy to let purchase at the same time. Yeah, it can, it, it can, can be a bit of a juggle. Yeah, it can prove problematic, whereas yeah. you get the money in the bank and then away you go. Um, what we also find is that sometimes the, the first charge loan use, use, using a, a proper mortgage isn't for everybody because they may have taken out a, a really good mortgage yes. already. So they might have a five year fixed that they don't want to touch. Uh, alternatively, they may have a tracker deal that is, you know, a lifetime tracker at base rate. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't really want to be mucking about with that. You leave that where it is for the time being, at least. Um, so then, what we look at is second charge lending, so a second okay. secured loan against your property. Uh, the good thing about those is they're not so income driven. Yeah. So they're a little bit more flexible. Um, you can get interest only versions of those as well, um, but you can take them in for anything up between five and. Um, 35 years, I think, is the maximum term on those. Um, uh, interest rates are a little bit higher, um, but you know they're in and around sort of 5%. So still a, a really good way of raising money, especially you know, if you're going to be generating you know, big yields on the other side yeah. of it, which is, yeah. what you, which is really what you want to do. So it's a good way to be able to, to, to raise some capital and, uh, and to carry on investing or start investing, which is what lots of my clients do. Mm -hmm. um, then on... To move away from residential properties, we then look at how we can help clients if they've already got uh, investment properties that have increased in value over the last, especially the last five years, yeah. um, that we do the same sort of process and we're able to help them raise uh, raise finance against their existing portfolio, okay. providing it meets all the stress tests. Um, yeah. There's no problem in raising finance from that perspective. You're more limited on the loan to values. Yeah. Uh, the highest you can get up to is 85%. Um, loan to value on a on a buy to let remortgage, and that's with Kent Reliance. There's only one lender that does that, um, and their rates are typically in in and around three and a half percent. Very but still, competitive. Yeah, but still yeah. very competitive. Really good rates, uh, and a really good way of raising to be able to keep just keep investing. Uh, yeah. If that's what you're looking to do, there's still some fantastic deals out there to be had, and this is just a way to keep your momentum going. Um, you can look at second charge lending as well. So if you've got some good deals that you're tied into on your buy to lets. You can look to raise money on a second charge basis. Not quite as competitive because there's only a few okay. lenders that do it. If you go above 75%, so up to 75%, interest rates about 8% on those, which yeah. is okay. 
Um, we can even get that down a little bit. But as soon as you go above 75 to 80%, that interest rate goes up to about 15%. Right. So you've really got to be raising that money to add value to something so you can pay that loan back quickly. And if you go up to 85%, you're into 17.9%, which is like a credit card. Really? So <laughs> you've really got to um, you've really got to be on, on the deal that you're taking that money out for. It's, it's got to be, be a something. good deal. Yeah, yeah. Very it's got to be yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you, it's a flip or something like that where you know you're going to make X amount of money back in that period of time, um, or or you're going to be adding value to be able to remortgage that property, then that would work because you could be able to pay that loan back. But still, some really good, interesting ways of raising finance against your portfolio or against your main residence to enable you to carry on investing. Yeah, no, I, th I think there's a couple of great tips there of innovative ways of removing uh, or raising capital from assets that you already have. And I think, as usual, Nick, you've come up with another great idea for investors to, to use and a great tool to, to contact you on. I mean, it, it's Hope Property Finance, where the web link is just down below. And if you want to contact Nick, you can do it through Hope Property Finance. Yeah, yeah, please get in touch. Yeah. More than happy to help. And if you want to meet Nick in person, he's here every month at the Great Property Meet at the Dunchurch Park Hotel in Rugby. And we meet on the third Tuesday, the uh, third Monday of every month. How did I forget that? Third <laughs> Monday of every month. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Andrew Roberts, and this is Nick Hope from Hope Property Finance. Thank you.